Hey everybody, I'm Josh the RV Nerd. Let me ask you a question. You done with 353 FLRB? Because I know I'm down with 353 FLRB. Come in about 9,100 pounds, give or take a little bit, depending on the exact equipment present on it. If what you are looking for is the biggest bang for your buck, you're looking for a big trailer to leave parked somewhere, but you're trying to do it on as tight of a budget as possible. This will give you the most cubic foot, square foot, whatever trailer per dollar of anything else I can imagine. Take a look inside this thing with our floor plan in a flash. Panoramic viewing windows out the wazoo, which uh, scientifically speaking is a lot, by the way. Eight foot ceiling, she's eight foot wide. The idea here is you take everything you know about a normal Wildwood and take it up a step like king beds. We have this one outfitted with optional dual air conditioners and a couple other goodies we're gonna cover along the way. It is a ton of trailer for the money. There's nothing that says you couldn't tow it. It is a little bit tall for an everyday tour, but at the same time, not really any taller than a common fifth wheel. I do still think though, this is definitely best maintained for or used for something that's going to just be left and maintained at like a seasonal or permanent or park site. And I don't think I'm doing my job if I don't start by showcasing the redonkulous amount of windows in this thing. The window coverage in this RV is pretty much beyond compare. I, I mean, short of another destination trailer like this, I just don't know of an RV that can offer you the kind of viewing and coverage this one provides. You can see how these giant panoramic super slide windows open for airflow. The slide's insanely tall. It's like seven feet tall in there. Uh, the center window in the front does also open for airflow. And then, of course, you've got the patio door. Now, it does come with a screen door. The RV was just shipped here, so we haven't slotted the screen door in place yet. And another thing it has is something else I'm a sucker for. Kind of like breakfast bar stools. I love me some Venetian blinds. I'm not really sure why I turned into a 1940s jazz guitarist from Chicago there. Loves me some, but hey, I'll roll with it. Thing is, those big windows are awesome. But kind of like right now, there's tons of sun beating through this thing. It'll turn the RV into a greenhouse if you're not careful. Good news is that Wildwood has solutions for that. All of these windows are super dark tinted, which is something you don't find on the rest of the Wildwood lineup. You find it only here in their destination trailers. Uh, also, you've got these blackout window shades, and I like how they have both lambrequins and valances. Those are both the top and side boxing to make sure the window doesn't uh, let light bleed through. And on the back side of these shades, it's actually got a uh, like a white backer to really blot the sun out and keep all that extra light out of here. Now, uh, another thing that is a bit of a departure here, because like if you start with the Wildwood x Light, then go up to full Wildwood, the Lodge is the next step in terms of equipment package, and one of the first thing you see is that the furniture gets upgraded. We start seeing things like actual recliners and true hide beds instead of jackknife sofas and uh, just free-floating rocking chairs. So everything kind of gets bumped up a notch, sort of like the tinted windows, similar thing there. The uh, up top here, we got a little kick of storage in that overhead area. Also, to keep the air moving, we have ourselves a nice residential ceiling fan to keep things uh, flowing around. Now, I had uh, mentioned that high to bed, so let's take a quick look here. And what's cool about this is, like, this is primarily a couple's rig, but if you're going to have a weekend guest, and they don't just have to be the grandkids, you can have adult guests over. You can have grown, large grandkids, friends over for a weekend. Maybe you have a drink or two. Maybe they shouldn't be driving. Maybe they need to stay overnight. My wife and I have spent a weekend on one of those and got along just fine. We're still married, so obviously it wasn't that bad of an experience. <laughs> uh, also, easy to miss, there's some power outlets over here next to where you're sitting. Very, very handy if you want to run like a laptop. Or I tell you what, my wife's got a deteriorating disc in her back. Having a place right there to plug in a heat pad, that's something she would appreciate. Um, the uh, Over here in the super slide. So this is a Wildwood Lodge is eight foot wide by eight foot tall. A Grand Lodge is going to be another six inches on both sides, so we get that extra tall ceiling. And the uh, accent light above that slide really helps uh, draw some attention to the super tall ceilings in this. But that also means with taller ceilings, we can have bigger slides, and they capitalize on that with a seven foot slide out, which is really bigger than you can get in almost any fifth wheel, and they pack that again with the biggest windows they can plus you got a big window over there uh in the hallway and i would say kind of like we saw a plug next to the recliners i would say that the uh power outlet down there is good for a vacuum cleaner but over here in the hallway 
you have a built-in central vacuum, and the little rectangle at the bottom is what I call an electric dustpan. It's actually a collection point, so if you just are, uh, let's say you're in the kitchen, and you're on crumb patrol, all the linoleum here, you could just kind of brush everything toward it, and you don't even have to crack all that stuff open. Now, real quick note before we jump to the kitchen is the entertainment. They let you kind of pick your own TV here. They let you pick your own poison. Some people want smart TVs, some people don't. And they've really found that from the factory level, they can never have the right one for you. So let you do whatever you want. What they do is give you plenty of room so that... Uh, You've got a Bluetooth, um, uh, yes, Bluetooth HDMI soundbar right there. And they leave you a shelf right here where if you want to upgrade and add your own, like, Blu-ray or something, you can. You can always just plug a Roku stick into that or into the TV directly. Uh, and they leave you a nice little spot right there where if you want to run the cables so that you don't have to have, like, this ugly mess of wires strung all over the place, you got it. Electric space heating fireplace down below. That can be used for propane-free heating so you don't got to burn up your propane. Although it does have a nice heated and closed belly, decent package on this here. Uh, you can also just use that for heatless LED visuals. And the kitchen in this thing. Oh my good lord, the kitchen in this thing. So I want to give you just a quick pass of it, uh, closed and nice, like kind of nice looking. Then we'll open everything up so you can see it in full detail. Since this trailer does tend to spend most of its time parked, that residential fridge makes sense to me. This is one of the times where uh, I, I think that that actually is a decent application for something like this because the RV is not going to get twisted and bumped and jumped down the road. That fridge is not going to be stressed in a way it wasn't intended for. Typically, destination trailers, once they get to a park, they tend to pretty much stay there. And now, I think without further ado, let's get it open. So let's start up here above the entertainment center. You can see that even this is nice and tall and large. Then above the refrigerator. Now, this is the kind of space, I, t I tell you what, I know what a lot of grown-up campers are going to do, is that is going to be the uh, probably the booze cabinet, but not everybody is a boozy camper, and that's fine. The fact is, you can put anything you want up there. That would be a really good space for something like a griddle that you maybe don't use all the time. Could look at those uh, exposed hidden hinges. We have an expose in the kitchen of this Wildwood today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, giant, like, residential-sized microwave right here. And, well, I mean, that is that is great. Now, obviously, you don't want to be cooking a turkey in a microwave for Thanksgiving because you will give your family salmonella. But, in theory, one could fit. <laughs> Now, inside that cabinet, if you look on the cabinet that's on the left-hand side of the screen right now, you notice how there's a shelf in there. Something I love is how they sink it back just a little bit so that if you have some tall stuff, you can still put some tall stuff kind of in front of that as well. Now, you haven't really seen a traditional pantry, but no worries. We got one right here. And as we get down a little bit closer, so you don't have to get on your hands and knees to get to the storage, you see how they're giving us some nice uh, full extension drawers right there. Just the way the light's hitting it. Doesn't that drawer kind of look like a little emoji face? <laughs> hey, look at me! Anyway, sorry. I don't know what that voice was. I'm, not, I, I'm never going to do that again. <laughs> uh, giant pots and pans drawers. And there are double uh, you know, doors here below the sink. Allow me to get these drawers out of the way for you real quick. Um, <laughs> you got double wastebasket space if you want it. That's also an easy place to be able to access your water heater. And I love this. I love the indirect lighting. Those two light switches right there under the sink, they activate the low accent lighting there and the high accent lighting above the slide. I guess it'd be a good idea to finish looking at the kitchen. Now, real quick, look inside the cabinet. You see the color of the wallboard inside of there? Look down below that. This is a countertop to cabinet bottom. Uh, backsplash, wrap around, surround with easy reach outlets, a nice door side kitchen viewing window, high rise sprayer faucet, stainless double sink. And uh, the Furion stove right here, what's kind of cool about that is the, uh, the light for the handles right here, it's actually two stage. So if you want just the handle light, you got that. But if you want uh, oven and handle light, you actually have both here. Now the cool thing about the Furion stove is a little sparker knob for our stove also sparks the oven but it won't start pumping gas until it detects that spark, so you can't turn it into a bomb. But that also means you don't have to get one of those uh, long, like, uh, you know, grill kind of lighters and, and get down on your hands and knees and put your face down near a uh, propane outlet because, I mean, who really wants to do that, right? Although one would naturally assume, based on my conduct during my video tours, that I am a person who frequently uh, inhales various fumes and vapors. Surprisingly, I'm very straight edge. That is not the case. I'm 
not much of a foreign substance person, but everybody lived their own life. Anyway, so uh, aside from that, what do you guys think so far? Do you like uh, what you've seen? Do you like the, you know, the tall ceilings? Is there something I've missed? You got a question? Let us know. Over here in the bathroom, since this is eight foot tall, if you are looking for headroom in the shower, I just don't know if there are many better options than this, you know? Uh, a lot of people say, oh, I want a fifth wheel so I have the big space. Well, the thing is, fifth wheels, usually, the bathroom's in the upper deck. There's exceptions, but that means that there's not always a lot of headroom for uh, you in the shower there. But this, man, if you're seven foot tall, if you are if you play for the New York Knicks and you're a power forward, you're going to fit. Porcelain foot flush stool, that is uh, a nice touch here compared to uh, some of the other Wildwood type stuff. And let me get you over here, just like we saw storage in the uh, kitchen area. That is, what is that, seven foot-ish of just pure linen storage space? Now, the ceiling on this is tall. So the power vent up here actually has a switch to turn the fan on and off and to open the vent lid. Now, that is a simple blade fan. It's enough for this room. But if you wanted something more substantial, more aggressive, give our team here at Halo RV a call. We can upgrade bath fans. Lickety split, no sweat. I love the big shower. The corner seat right there, very nice. Like if you're my Uncle Gary, you need to shave your legs every now and then. Don't ask. You don't want to know the answer to that question. Anyway, sealed edge counters, not just in the kitchen, but in here as well. And the just the slats. The look that gives the little toe kick at the bottom. The touches, the feel, <laughs> that sounds like a cotton commercial, the touch, the feel of cotton. You get the idea. The little details in this one really make it for me. That giant mirror right there and the purpose use light. That's like the only time in Wildwood they use that. I love the look of that. Almost like white lightsaber glow beam up there. And it's giving us some top down light. So as I get older and the bags under my eyes get a little deeper, it gives me a really good look at how not good looking I really have become. <laughs> then again, it, it wouldn't kill me to lose a few pounds and sleep a little more either, but hey, I digress. Back here in the bedroom. One of the other cool things about this being purpose built as a large trailer like this is the fact that it is made with a big bedroom in mind. They know that you're not using this for just a casual weekend camper. So it comes standard. Uh, no, actually this is a queen bed standard. I believe that we have upgraded this to the king, but here's the thing. Check this out. I, I've got the bed slid all the way to the left. There's still a gap over here. So if you want to get some super custom mega bed or something like that, uh, you can. There are breeze windows on both sides of the bed with more of their own roller shades. And look at those outlets and side stands. Household and USB plugs on both sides of the bed within the slide. I don't know that it gets much more CPAP friendly than that. I'm not a CPAP user, but I'm looking at that going, yes, I get a spot to put my phone next to me at night. Terrific. And once again, since the slides are so flipping tall, they are able to really maximize our storage up here. Uh, let me get you up here a little bit closer to see what I mean. It is deceptively large and deep. There is a lot of storage action going on in there. Now, I want to talk about air conditioning. I'll probably talk about it again because I think that this is a make or break deal for a lot of people here. So pardon me as I get up on my uh, you know, soapbox. This RV normally is 30 amp, not second air capable. You can option them to 50 amp service to make them second air capable. And you see here in this video, we have optioned this one with a second air conditioner. I have been advised by my rep, we are the only dealer in his territory that builds a Wildwood Lodge, not a Grand Lodge, but the standard lodge that we're in with a factory installed second air. And I'll tell you why I do it. Because I asked you folks at home and you said this is the way to go. And I agree with you. I think this is the right way to go. And here's the thing, guys. When you get it installed from the factory like this, now it's covered under the factory warranty. And now it costs less money because, frankly, Wildwood, with their volume, they buy air conditioners for a lot less than we do at Halet RV. And their labor time, when the RV is getting built, it's easy to slap a second air on. Our labor time to do it after the fact costs more. So that is the dollar for dollar best way to handle this for you. And just like in the living room, awesome window coverage in this. And those windows right next to these giant uh, mirror doors right here in that wardrobe make this room feel enormous. And again, maybe it isn't just feeling that way. Maybe it is huge. You've got this massive closet here. Uh, this is bigger than most closets you see in fifth wheels. And it's a hanging rack instead of a hanging rod. So your clothes always tend to stay right where you left them. Now, since we have the triple dresser drawers down below, we still have places for like, you know, our foldables. 
but it also creates this handy little utility shelf in the closet above that. Not to mention you have a dedicated shelf in the closet and an area to decorate above that. And we're not done. You got TV hookups over there and even more shelf space. They have this thing loaded up. But one of the things I missed, as long as we're talking about storage, is under this king bed. So if we uh, lift that up and take a look, you can see it does have a plywood base. It is easy lift. And there's even a shelf down there. So if you want to make that like a shoe garage or maybe like a little cat bed shelf or anything like that, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different ways you can use this one, I think. Now, as compared to a common travel trailer, I think seeing a destination trailer all closed up is less critical, but... Uh, I actually did want to take a second to show you around, just for the sake of being complete, let you get to see just kind of how everything plays with one another. One thing I did want to point out, too, is in a lot of times these destination trailers, when the slides are all closed up, you can get in through the RV door in the bedroom to get up to the living room. In this one, it is just a little bit too tight to do that. So in one of these, you are going to need that patio door to get in here. And you see how you do need to stagger the chairs a little bit to make room for that slide to close. That being said, again, I'm not sure how often you're going to need to do it. But if the RV is all closed up and like you got to get in here and empty the fridge or pack the fridge up at a destination, you can do that too. Now you might be noticing how there's some things like there's some of that kind of little foam stuff wrapped around the chairs. We're actually looking at the RV right now as it arrives. The rest of the footage you've seen, that's after the RV has already been here. So I kind of have to scramble things around to make some sense out of it for you. I'll tell you what I like about this one. I think this is one of the most park-friendly trailers I've seen in a long time. It is made with the idea of being parked somewhere and potentially building a deck onto it. And that's really what I mean by park-friendly. No slides over here on the door side whatsoever. And you see these big fancy like flip-down stable steps pretty often. This one obviously uses uh, the more traditional steel folding steps, but there's a reason for it. If you're going to build a deck onto this camper, those big like more ride and LCI stable steps aren't going to do you a lot of good but these can flip up out of the way. You can either build your own steps to kind of slide over them, or you can, uh, again, some people will build a deck onto the R uh, RV. It really just depends on uh, how you plan to use it, you know? The uh, uh, big sliding patio door there, I love that right up front because that plus the big front panoramic windows and the windows on the super slide that we'll see give this thing just an insanely awesome big view. There is, I don't know that there's another RV that has the kind of viewing that this one offers. If not, it's got the same front end, basically. Uh, also, we do like to build these with the optional power awning that you're looking at right there. And uh, a couple things I like about it. If we take a look at that thing open, you see tons of patio space there, but they mount the power awning up high enough that even if you do build a deck onto it, you're not gonna be like hitting your head on it. They make sure that is mounted all the way up there at the top profile of the roof line. So you're not gonna have a head knock in situation. Now, once again, just huge admiration and appreciation for the window coverage on this. That is absolutely, I think, one of the greatest points of this camper. The signature calling card of this model is just the face that it gives you. It, I mean, I imagine myself like if I had a, a lake site, if I was parked looking at a lake or like, overlooking a hill and some some trees in the background or something like that man the visibility you get out of this thing is absolutely awesome then the combination of tinted windows and the roll down kind of blackout shades inside can keep a ton of that sunshine heat from seeping into this thing another option that we like to apply to all of our lodge and, and grand lodge the big brother to this destination trailers here at halid rv is a uh, detachable tongue on the front here. So that A-frame there can actually be removed if you are so inclined the way that we have this one built. Keep in mind that is optional. Sometimes it is possible that we have one not with that feature here. It, what it can allow you is if you're, uh, some campsites will say, no, the, the camper can't be more than X feet long. Well, sometimes the whatever two and a half or three-ish feet or whatever it gives you, it can save the day. Um, Quick note on that though, and I hope you appreciate it, uh, the uh, kind of buyer beware information that we'll give you sometime. If you remove the tongue on a camper, some campground owners don't like that. If you're curious about why, leave us a comment asking why, give our team a call. We'll make sure that you're uh, you know, squared away there. You also see those stabilizer jacks over there. That is actually an optional piece of equipment on these Wildwood Lodges. Some people do prefer to order them with no jacks and then do like their own bottle jack situation. We like to make sure that, uh, you know, you could still do that if you were so inclined, you could bottle jack up to the frame, but we wanna make sure everybody has some kind of option. And 
what is standard here is the heated enclosed accessibility just like the big brother wildwoods it is a uh, a very nice like hard shell underbelly cover but it comes in sectionalized panels so god forbid you had to drop something for service reasons there's no like visible signature of any of that ever being done once the rv uh has the belly skin put back in place it's a nice thing compared to like the polypropylene uh you know plastic cardboard looking underbelly sheets that Basically, you got to cut open with a Stanley knife and then duct tape shut. You're never going to have duct tape on your belly if you need to work on it on one of these wild woods. A couple things as we jump back to the bed slide above the main sewer hookup. You do have your black tank flush right there, which I think is a, the ideal location for it. And uh, under the headboard area of the bed, you do have this, uh, you can actually access it from inside or outside storage compartment right here. What we're looking at are things like the uh, the power cord. There's a kind of like a goodie box. You see that mesh net hanging out. That is the uh, hookup stuff, all the hoses and things for the uh, central vacuum system. That is magnet held back, by the way. Just one of those little wildwood details they, they're very consistent about throughout all of their products. Uh, if you look at the top corners of the slide outs coming into view right now, you actually see the slide awning prep bracket. So if that is something you choose to add, it is simpler and easier and less expensive as a result to do that on these wildwoods. Uh, and you see the second air conditioner sticking up on the back there. Remember that, well, heck, overall, this camper standard is a 30 amp RV. You can option it to 50 amp with second air readiness, which is how you're most likely going to find it in the Midwest again. We, based on your consumer feedback, have uh, built this with the full second air conditioner installed just because it's so tall, you've got a couple big slides, and it certainly does feel appropriate to me. And I'll tell you what, even though that's the smallest member of the Wildwood Lodge family, it might be my favorite. That, that is a cool rig. Those windows, that giant living room, it gets me every time. It gets me every, I like, I like this whole thing. I think every, this is a really well executed model personally. Uh, and, and I tell you, we are family owned and operated. And uh, if you like what you see here, if you appreciate the effort that we put in today, give us a call. Give us the opportunity to earn your business when you're ready. And they're on wheels. You don't got a vehicle to tow it. You don't want to tow it all the way back home. We know people that do that kind of thing. We can set you up with delivery and quotes and all that kind of stuff. Um, short of that, if you have any questions, if you saw something you like, if I missed something, or if there's something you'd like to change, leave us a little comment down here. Let us know what else we can do for you. And I personally try to hand comb every single one of those comments that comes through. I really try to give all the attention I can to every single one of our viewers. And folks, I sure appreciate it. And short of that, as always, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo Camp at everyone.